Well guys, today we're gonna try to take this 1987 Cadillac Cimarron that I paid $600 for and that has not been registered or driving or on the road since 1998 from here in Vermont, a thousand miles away to Wisconsin. Now just last week, this car was not even running. I had to replace the injectors to get it running. So over 20 years this car has been sitting. The reason I'm driving it to Wisconsin is there's a guy out there who has a YouTube channel called Bruiser's Beaters who is really interested in buying these because he loves <coughs> J-Body, General Motors cars. He's got another Simron and he's gonna be using this one on his channel and hopefully he's gonna be restoring it. He even sent me, <coughs> let me cover up his address, but he even sent me a ton of tools to drive back to him. Uh, and parts that might break. So we got spark plugs, ignition coil, I think he sent a fuel pump, uh, wires. So anything that might break on this 1,000 mile road trip, we're gonna be covered because he sent me it. So, Bruiser's Beaters, he's gonna be taking over this car and having it on his channel. Now, right before we start on this 1,000 mile road trip, there are some things I gotta do to this car before I'm confident it'll make the journey. So. Let's pull it on into the warehouse. We're gonna do probably the bare minimum, which is, you know, tires and oil change. Uh, because I already did the new injectors and I did the brakes, so once we have tires and oil change, we'll at least have new brakes, new injectors, and we're just gonna hit the road and pray. This is kind of a vice grip garage style video, who's one of my favorite channels, so cool. The first thing we gotta do is replace these tires because they are not making it. Got all four tires off. Found the date code, 1993. So no wonder they're all weather cracked. Dang, that's an old tire. We got them tires on, now I'm gonna jump start it and bring it on into the warehouse. We brought the car in, now we're just gonna do the oil change for sure. All right guys, we're gonna do the oil change now. Ooh, this is a bad angle. Did that fall in? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Oil looks old but good, guys. It's looks about how I would expect it to look. Oh, she's on there pretty good. Come on, big boy. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Thought we had a couple more threads there, boys. Looks like we got some cleanup now. <laughs> got the oil filter primed up. We're gonna go put it in. Let's fill her up. Mobile One, the best oil on the market. Because the Cimarron only gets the finest. All right, that'll do it, guys. We'll just give all the other fluids a check since I am driving it a thousand miles. We got brake fluid in here. That is filled all the way up, perfect. Engine coolant. So we've got the correct level. The fluid also looks pretty good, too. Power steering fluid is a bit low. I already checked that, so we're gonna add some of that before we leave. Trans fluid is also a little bit low. We'll add some of that because obviously we have a small leak. But other than that, I'm gonna drive this home today, and it's a 30 minute drive back to my house, so we can just, that'll be a kind of test run to make sure everything's good. Uh, and if everything's good, I won't even film that trip, I'll just show that I got home. And then the next thing you'll see is me departing for Wisconsin. All right, well, the car did make it home. No problems here. Well, the fluids all look good from my final check over. Let's see it crank up. Haha. <laughs> all right. Get on our way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we are on our way. Good oil pressure. Fuel gauge is good. Temp is good. Uh, I don't know. There's nothing else to it but to do it. saw we hit the interstate uh, she's cruising well a good 62 miles an hour for now so I'll keep her at uh, all the gauges are looking good uh, no troubles yet but it's only been 15 minutes
driven about an hour now, guys, and it's uh, shown no sign of anything bad. So let's keep on pushing. about another hour on the road and uh, one issue has arisen the temperature of the car is staying at way too low so it used to be at it used to be riding around half but now it's you know low uh, and that's just less efficient sometimes it stops the torque converter from locking up so I'm just gonna probably stop at an auto parts store buy a thermostat and put it in tonight so that tomorrow we can have it running at operational temperature and so of course that the next person I'm giving it to can have a new thermostat in there. Uh, you may have also noticed the speedometer quit working. That's been sporadic but stopped working. Uh, pretty much good now. But she's cruising. Good oil pressure, good voltage. Check engine light also does come on and off. Maybe the, uh, the thermostat will solve that. But that's our two hour report. I'm gonna go to an auto parts store tonight for sure though. Pulled into this auto zone here, New York somewhere. I don't know what town it is, but I'm gonna go in and see if they have the parts. Well, look at that guys, they actually had it right there. So I'll put it in tonight. And for now, let's keep going back on the road again and thank god I replaced the brakes in this thing because there's a lot of stop and go traffic here here we go Okay, I stopped here in Canandaigua, New York to fill up again. Got out of the car and my knee really hurts. At the risk of sounding like an old man, this car has no cruise control. So I gotta press the gas pedal all the time and it's a heavy gas pedal. And apparently, my knee doesn't like it. Oh, holy crap. Wow, it actually hurts pretty bad. Uh, we're gonna try to make it to Buffalo tonight, which is about 100 miles more. I might uh, need to walk a little, walk off this knee a little bit, and then we'll keep on going. Walked around a little bit, knee's starting to feel a little better. Let's, let's push on. It's starting to rain a little bit here guys, but unfortunately this is what my wipers do when I use them. Well, you might not be able to tell, but it actually makes it a little bit harder to see <laughs> because it just smears it.
here's room number one. I drove seven hours today because I started late. I started at one and then I drove till nine with like an hour break in between everything for food and gas and everything. All right, day two out here on the road. Time for a motel parking lot repair. I'll about guarantee you the thermostat's under here. So we'll see if we can get that out of there. sucker let's put the new one in this little you don't even need to, need to take this out and I did and then I dropped it so I don't know where it is so we need to go to a hardware store and get a new bolt for that Let's see if it starts up on this fine morning Oops. well at least nothing's coming out of there but def stuff can definitely get in well bought this stuff Let's see if any one of them fits. Well, look at me. One of the bolts fits, so I just kind of threaded it in uh, a little bit because it's obviously longer than the original. And I'll check on that later. I'll top off the coolant and uh, hit the road for day two. We got 10 hours ahead of us today. Been on the road for about a half hour after the uh, thermostat change, and it's running just above the one quarter mark which is a little tiny bit warmer than it was running before when it was just stuck wide open. But I guess these new thermostats just keep them, I guess they just keep them running kind of low. So uh, at least now it's regulated. But anyway, let's continue on. Columbus everybody we are now on the bridge going into Toledo or something I don't even know but some of the signs say Toledo guys I just saw a very large truck accident happen I hope the drivers are all right but I was up on the hill and pretty big collision happened probably about a mile and a half away from them when it happened. See, we even got truckers on the other side of the highway stopped to go help now. I have a feeling we're gonna be stuck here for a bit, possibly up to an hour or more. There it is up there. Got out of my truck to look at it and to stretch my legs because I got no AC, obviously. Not looking good. fire truck and second ambulance not good another news helicopter guys if I'm on the news tell them I'm famous oh no wait that's not a news helicopter that's a uh, that's an ambulance helicopter uh oh we got some serious injuries here guys huh Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The helicopter's gonna airlift him. Well, to take somebody to the hospital now. Oh, uh, he's okay. Well, guys, it's been about an hour and a half, and I think they're gonna open one lane of traffic now. And we are once again on the move, ladies and gentlemen. We were stuck there for one hour, 45 minutes. There's the mess, ladies and gents.
This is actually the same Holiday Inn that we stayed at on the Alaska road trip. Same exact one. So this is night two on the road. Simron's still doing excellently. I had a good night's sleep at the Holiday Inn here. Simran, best looking car in the parking lot. So today's the day we're gonna deliver it to him. I'm gonna just wipe down the interior and throw out all my stuff before I do that because I'm not gonna give it to him looking like this. All right, day three start. <laughs> Every time. Just crossed the Wisconsin border and are now in Genoa City. You can see that sign there. And this is the town that Bruiser's Beaters is located in. So I think we're only about 10 minutes away now. I hope he's ready to see this beautiful Cimarron. It made it, dude. Yeah, we just pulled up on um, Bruiser's Beaters. There he is. <laughs> he's got his Cimarron here. Mine's a rough bucket. Yeah. <laughs> this is... There he is, like I said, go subscribe to him because he's been amazing. <laughs> so he's got a Cimarron here and uh, this is the Cavalier that he restored? Celebrity. celebrity. Yeah, that's an, 80, uh, that's an 85 Celebrity. I oh yeah, I saw this on your I, I saw this on your channel. This is the one you did a lot of work to. Rebuilt the transmission, Rebuilt, yeah. a brand new engine wow. in it. Wow, wow. We did the interior. This car's been to the moon and back, I believe. And she is the nice. The at least rolled once or twice. It looks even, great. Even the headliners are here on everything I own. Nice. Yeah, you're gonna have to do the headliner on oh, that. That's, that's no big deal. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, I just he's already starting to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help himself. The uh, radio is intermittent. I showed you guys in the first video that it was working, and I was really impressed that it was working. But on this trip, it started to go out. So he's got another one. He's just gonna throw it in already. Yeah, I made the Let's wiring see. harness. Oh, I made yeah. the wiring harness literally while you were on the way here to adapt. Oh wow! If this is a '95 radio. Uh -huh. The wiring harness is different in the '80s cars. So this is the top of the line, there you go, that's, that's the logo. He's got the new radio in. You gotta fight it a little bit. We're gonna see if it uh, powers up. Well, the screen did. Hey, there you go. Let me just put it on like public radio so you don't get like a copy. Oh right. yeah. Well, I mean, it's getting Chicago, so it's obviously working right. There you go. We just took it for a test spin and now he's gonna try to clean up this little hood area. I will be surprised if it actually cleans up, but uh, are you confident? <laughs> me? Yeah. Oh, man. I, me, me I've, I've actually had worse paint than this. Okay. I'm just cleaning it so I don't gouge it up. Yeah, yeah. There's your answer, what this car She's looks like. She's cleaning up. Wow. Look at that, man. There's what there, if you want to, I can probably do this whole hood in about 30 minutes. So he did the whole front clip area here. So take a look at this fender that he just polished up compared to the door. You can even see the line of where it stopped. This is just flat. And then this has actually got the gloss and the little metallic flakes. She's so going to look sweet, guys. And that's just a little bit, that's just a small bit of Meguiar's polish. Nothing special. Just the cheapest stuff I could buy at O'Reilly's at the time. And just a basic Harbor Freight polisher with some Amazon polishing uh, foam. There you go. There you have it, guys. Get on the polish game. All right, he's going to start up this Cimarron, which is the one that this one will be replacing because this one is extremely rusty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's got AC. The interior is a lot more together. Oh, yeah. So what do you think of a wore out Cimarron? Well... I like the AC at least. Yeah, this is this is uh, what happens when they get tenderized by salt for 30 years. <laughs> but no, I just had an opportunity to buy this and I'm like, okay, cool, I got a J body, I'm gonna enjoy it. And then I'm like, wow, this car's fast and this car's fun. I don't want a Cavalier anymore, I don't want a four banger, man. It's gotta have a yeah. V6, so. There you go. I'm like, well, I guess my introduction was basically the best they could be, which is the Simmer Uh huh. And even at that, it's not a bad car. I mean, yeah, by Cadillac specifications, it's kind of a joke, but. For a Cavalier, man, this thing is decked out. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna get back to my house and uh, I'm gonna pass the phone back to him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it might be a little windy, hard to hear, but we just landed in Boston Logan. Uh, that's the end of the car. That's the end of the Cimarron. Definitely went to the right person. We're just waiting for Jeb to pick me up now, but he's a little lost. Had a good flight. Thank you guys for watching this video. 
I'm amazed at that little Cadillac Cimarron. Absolutely amazed that it made it a thousand miles after sitting for 15 years. All I did was put new injectors in it to make it run and it drove 1,000 miles halfway across country with not a hiccup. I mean, we did put a thermostat in it, but man, that car is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you next week. Jeb finally found me. Ooh, truck looks clean, too. Why is he running away from me? Well, there he is.